Well, it was spring 2014, and I'd just taken my senior wind ensemble to the local music festival competition. And my seniors had played a nearly flawless performance of some very advanced level high school repertoire. And as a result, the adjudicator had awarded them the top prize given out by the festival, the award for the best ensemble. And in that moment, I was undoubtedly proud of my students. But unexpectedly, there was also the sense of emptiness that followed. And I recall thinking on the bus ride back to the school that night that if this was everything we had worked towards, if this was it, then I was missing something. I believe we live in a society and that I teach in an educational system that has an unhealthy infatuation with competition and the pursuit of individualized excellence. And you don't need to... <laughs> And you don't need to look very far in the high school system to see how this plays out. We give our highest scholarships to our top academic achievers. We push our athletes, our musicians, our chess club players, our DECA club participants to be the best. And we even design competitions where we can show our students without a shadow of a doubt who was first and who was last, who was best and who was worst. And all the while, I believe we ignore the tremendous amount of stress, anxiety, and pressure that we heap onto our students. And I believe we ignore the resulting system where countless high school students walk the hallways of our buildings every single day, feeling a profound sense of disconnection, isolation, and loneliness. They choose to function on the margins of the community, afraid to engage, because they're terrified that they just won't measure up. But I believe our society functions in a similar way. So let me ask you the question. When's the last time you declined the opportunity to participate in an activity with others because you were afraid you wouldn't measure up? That you might be judged by those around you? And we developed these great little catchphrases like, you know what, I'd love to sing, but I'm actually tone deaf. Or, I, you said that before. I, <laughs> or, I don't have an athletic bone in my body. And another common one I've heard is, you know, I'd help, but I don't even know which end of the hammer to pick up. And these catchphrases are highly effective in keeping us on the sidelines, away from the judgment of others. But sadly, they also prevent us from experiencing the deep sense of belonging that comes when we know that we belong to others. And I think it's actually a byproduct of a society that at its core doesn't really value the communal expressions of participation. We seem to say that the quality of the activity or the level of the participant matters more than the relational belonging that's formed when we participate together. And I think it helps to explain a little bit, at least in part, the feeling that something was missing when I left that festival in 2014. Because if I'm really honest with myself, along the way I had started to buy into that traditional model of excellence and to push my students hard towards the competition. And in so doing, I had started to use my students as a vehicle to pursue a musical goal versus using music as the vehicle to create inclusive spaces of belonging for my students. And the one elevates the quality of the activity and the other elevates the individual, their well-being, their belonging, and ultimately their sense of empowerment that matters most. And I want to see a movement in education where we leave behind those traditional models of excellence and instead forge a courageous new path towards excellence that's defined by shared engagement, relational connectedness, community collaboration, where ultimately our success is determined by the quality and the impact of the human interaction and our ability to be of service to each other. Now, maybe you think this sounds a bit wishy-washy or touchy-feely, or maybe you're wondering about what this actually looks like in practice. And in part, I hope to answer that last question through the illustration of one of the projects of our music program. But before I get there, let me first help to set the context a little bit for our journey. Because it was when my colleagues and I in our department began to think more holistically about our role as educators, when we began to consider the human need for belonging, to know others and be known in return, when we began to tackle the tough question of what it might look like for a high school music program to have something to say about social justice in our community. And when we began to dream of creating inclusive spaces of belonging for students where they would be empowered to live lives of significance in the world. It's then that we realized we needed to leave behind those traditional models of excellence and instead to shift our purpose towards excellence that's measured through relational belonging. And one of the projects in our music program that's helping us to live these values is called the Circle of Music. 
And this is a project where we bring together youth from our music program and we pair them with a senior in our community who's living with dementia. And along with their caregiver, they meet each week. And over juice and cookies, they dig into each other's lives. They get caught up on the week and they just build relationships. And then that's followed by a large group time of singing where community is fostered through the creation of art. And then again, before the time finishes, there's the opportunity for the participants to socialize. And this is a project that's a joint project between the Cameron Heights Music Program, the KW Alzheimer's Society, Merep, a master's in community music graduate from Wilfrid Laurier University, and St. Peter's Lutheran Church, which hosts the event each week. But before I say too much more about how the circle of music is helping us to redefine excellence, I want us to experience the circle of music, at least a little taste of the circle of music here tonight. So as I invite my friends to come and join us on stage, I just want to be clear with you that what's about to unfold tonight is not a performance. This is not intended for you to sit in your chairs and to passively consume, but rather this is an open invitation to each of you to be an active, engaged participant with us as we sing. So, <laughs> I'm going to need you to turn off that voice in your head that's used to saying that you're tone deaf and you can't sing. <laughs> And I'm going to need you to, to silence the voice that says that you shouldn't sing because the people around you are going to judge you. And instead, I want you to take a risk. I want you to imagine that you're sitting on stage next to one of these seniors or one of these youth, experiencing the deep sense of joy that comes when we know that we belong. And so before I turn it over to Sasha Judelson Kelly, who is our project coordinator for the Circle of Music, I just want to say that when we finish singing tonight, you are welcome to applaud. But please don't applaud as if this was some performance that you watched. Applaud rather in celebration of the moment that we're about to share together. Or applaud in celebration of the relationships that have formed between these seniors and these youth over the last year of the, the Circle of Music project. Are you ready? <laughs> Great. Let's sing together tonight. <clears throat> Hey, 
yana, hey yana, oh, hey yana. Rivers are our sisters. We must take care of them. The rivers are our sisters. We must take care of them. Hey, Yana. The trees are our brothers. We must take care of them. Take care of them. Hey, Yana Ho. Hey, Yana Ho. Yana. Hey, Yana Ho. Hey, Yana Ho. Yana. The earth is our mother. She will take care of us. The earth is our mother. She will take care of us. Hey, Yana Ho. The circle of music is an experience that just simply wouldn't exist in our program if we were following those traditional models of excellence. And we would lose out on the opportunity to create community between diverse groups of people. At its core, I believe that competition and the pursuit of individualized excellence actually fractures relationships. And when we prioritize technical prescribed outcomes, we disempower community stakeholders. In the circle of music, it's the kind of experience where Regardless of whether the singing is excellent or not on a given Thursday, music remains the facilitator of something that's so much greater, for intergenerational communities to be forged, for spaces of mentorship and support to flourish, and for the hearts and minds of our students to be opened up to the possibility of creating relationships with people that are vastly different than them, relationships that are founded on the values of empathy, kindness, and respect. Values I believe we can all agree our world desperately needs more of right now. In our culture at Cameron Heights, we resist the notion that we need to foster a culture of competition and individualized excellence for the sake of preparing our students for a tough and competitive world. Rather, I believe it is our responsibility as educators to create spaces of inclusion and belonging for students, where they can ultimately be empowered to be difference makers in the world, shaping the world into a place where the norm becomes seniors living with dementia, meeting to build relationships with youth. In our program, we use music as the vehicle to push after this kind of social change in the world. And the stories of hope and life transformation that are emerging are beautiful and deeply inspiring. But I believe that the concepts I'm sharing with you tonight are broad. And I actually get shivers thinking about what it would look like for each one of you gathered here tonight in your own ways to begin to implement these ideas in the communities that you belong to. Because the reality is this. There are too many people in our society who live on the sidelines, who feel relegated to the margins, and they desperately want and need a space where they can belong. But they are terrified that they just don't measure up. And they believe that who they are isn't good enough. They need a connector. Someone like you or someone like me who's going to be willing to invite them off of the sidelines. To pull them from their spaces on the margins and welcome them into communities where excellence is defined. By the quality and the impact of the human interaction. And our ability to be of service to each other. I believe our society needs connectors now more than it ever has before. And so tonight, I leave you with one final question. Will you join me in the difficult but rewarding work of redefining excellence in our community? Thank you. <laughs>